Hello everyone. Today we are going to create an audiovisual piece for a minimalist piano composition called Piano Face by Stephen Rich. I'll walk you through my design process from where I get the inspiration from to how I plan the visuals and how the network is structured in Touch Designer. As always, let's first look at the final effects. The visual inspiration came from a design book called Inflection Sandwich by Will Holder. I like the minimal geometric layout and think it would be fun to recreate that in Touch Designer. At the same time, um, I was listening to Piano Face recently. This is a classic minimalist piece that plays with um, subtle time shifts. I felt the visual and the audio would be fit together. So I decided to make a visual out of it. As for my design process, I started the concept sketching. I started with pen and paper, sketch out the basic shapes and layouts. After I have the very basic layout and sizes, I move on to the touch designer and recreate that and then iterate on the go. For the values like the position and sizes, I still um, manually experiment it out. But maybe in your case, you can apply some completely random values to generate more uh, interesting looks. Really depends on the composition you have. Just to say for this one, I still manually did the work and store that data in the table. Now let's understand the network. For this visual, we will first need to create the base visual, which is one of the uh, rectangular here. And to create that, we will use basic geometric shapes like rectangular, the filled ones and the outline ones, and the circle with different size. We will adjust their sizes, rotation, and position to create the dynamic composition and use a table to store different uh, positions of geometric shape. And then once we have these uh, base image, we will use a transform to create this read layout. You just need to scale down the visual and then use the repeat in the extent mode. The final step is to make it auto active. We will use our audio to drive, for example, the position and brightness of our rectangular and the rotation speed of our circles. Um, so without further ado, let's dive into the network. First, we need a constant to set the resolution. Uh, we add a uh, constant chop and uh, name here, resolution X, 1920, and resolution Y. And then we add our basic geometries. First, we need a rectangular, and then we uh, use the resolution for our rectangular. Then change the size to 0 0.2 and 0 0.72. And then we need a, a another rectangular. And for this one, we change the size to 975, 373. Uh, fill alpha to 0 and border color to white. And border width to 0 0.01. Then we add our circles. So for the circle, again, uh, we use the resolution. And for the size here, I'm using radius 0 0.5, 0 0.35, and the rotation 30. And then again, uh, turn off the fill alpha, border color, uh, and the border width to 0 0.01. And then uh, we're gonna repeat a few more times. For this one, we put 0 point minus 0 0.05, and then minus 0 0.05. Seven, five. I'm just gonna uh, repeat a few more times. I increase by 0 0.025 each time. And then I create nine of them. The final one is minus 0 0.225. And then we connect all of them to a switch. Just grab all of them to a switch. Add a now to our switch. Uh, now we can animate our circle. 
To move our circles, we need an LFO. And we change the type to ramp. And then we add a mass, add a knot, change the name to switch, change the range from 0 to 1 to 0 to 9, and also frequency we lower down to 0 0.2. We chop the reference from here to uh, here. Now you can see our circle is uh, looping through these nine circles. Then we're gonna uh, connect all of our shapes together. We add a composite and connect together. And in the operation, we choose add, then connect it to a transform, connect it to a null at the open background. So we can see our new uh, shape. Then let's move our rectangular over here. To move the rectangular, we need a table. Uh, to store different parameters in here, I store the parameters like the size of the rectangular and the position, also the field of alpha here. I create eight different rectangular to use, and then to use it, you need to use a select, select dot, and select rows by index. So we would use our song to loop the index here. To create that, we would add our audio file in. Uh, I'm using Piano Face by Steven Rich. We're going to connect it to a info and grab the uh, file lens here to change the time here. And then uh, add a audio device out. Then we would need an audio analysis component, drag it from the palette. I'm using the high and um, lower down the threshold, but you should change the threshold based on your music piece. Then we add a select. We select the high. Then we add an envelope. Change the width to 10. Add a mass. We need to change the order. And then combine chops, choose divide. This will turn whatever range we have here to uh, 0 to 1. And you can connect to a trail to see the difference. You can see the value is ranging from maybe like 0 to 0 0.6. And then after the map, we are, have the range of uh, 0 to 1. How this range is easier for us to work with um, things. And we're going to add a mass and change the range from 0 to 1 to 1 to 8. And then add another mass. Uh, because we want to get the integer, we choose round here. So we're looping from 0 to 8. And then we call this index. And then chop the reference to our select index here. Also use it here. Now this select is always changing based on our music. Uh, we're gonna use the expression uh, in our rectangular here. The expression will be op select one and then zero one uh, which is the number over here and the same we add for x uh, zero two and uh, the alpha which is zero three we uh, use this value on to our rectangular and you can see it's already changing based on the music uh, i notice a glitch here to be the last one i'm gonna change the size uh central x to three okay now should be fine all right the visual is a bit intense i'm gonna add a filter uh, to smooth out the visuals a little bit we add the filter after the mass here we change the filter width to 0 0.3 and then we want to enhance our visuals. Uh, first, we add a glowing effect to our rectangular. To do that, we add a blur and then add a composite. For the blur, we're going to uh, increase the threshold. And here we choose add. If you find the alpha is too intense because it adds blur, you can also change it down, something like this. Then I will add a, a transform. For the transform here, let's scale it down to 0 0.2. And then in the tile here, we choose repeat. So we have this grid layout. And then I want to enhance the circles over here. We're going to add a feedback loop. Add a level. 
add a transform so add a transform before the level and then add a composite compose the original one to the composite and drag onto the feedback in the level here we're gonna lower down the opacity and composite will choose add as you can see we have this small trading effect and then also transform i'm gonna rotate slightly um, as you can see, it can create quite dynamic looks. Uh, like it can go like this. Uh, it's quite cool. But uh, I personally just gonna keep it 's the end of this tutorial hope you find it useful and see you next time